What is up gamers? Welcome back to another predecessor video. Patch 0 0.19 just came out and I want to read all about it. Let's get right into this one. All right from this introduction it looks like they don't really have any major features in this update but they do talk about summer skin sales which is probably a little bundle something that I'm not really curious about. They also mentioned Terra which is the new hero which I'm very very interested in. We'll definitely look at that one first. And of course, they also mentioned balance patch changes, which I'm very, very curious about as well. New Hero Terra, the Steadfast Bulwark. Curse Breaker Terra charges into battle. I'm curious at this one. Let's let's have a look. All right, we're hitting play. First time I'm looking at this one. Let's see what we think about Terra. Sharpen your axe and steady your shield. Terra is charging onto the battlefield. A fearless and unyielding warrior, Terra's raw strength and unrivaled power can strike okay. fear in the heart of anyone standing in the way of her quest for justice. Looks like she has two new abilities. Terra's passive ability is Hersa, which strengthens and empowers her abilities with additional effects once she's gained enough stacks. Terra can gain stacks of her sir by damaging enemies with her basic attacks and abilities. Once she has maximum stacks, her weapons emit a radiant glow and the next ability cast will be empowered. Okay, I'll pause it for a second. It looks like there is five stacks uh, on her passive right here. As soon as you hit five stacks, you get an empowered ability. Glow so kind of like crunch, cast will be but empowered. You probably just need to hit somebody five times. Terra's right? primary ability is Ruthless Assault, where she swings her mighty axe around her, dealing two ferocious blows, slashing at all enemies in range. When empowered by Terra's passive ability, she strikes a devastating third blow that deals true damage, making this ability okay. extremely potent as her main source of damage. All right, so I'll pause it again. One quick thing about true damage, it makes it so she can play into tanks. The reason they probably do stuff like this, it's the same reason why they give Richter true damage on his hook, they give true damage on Crunch Q, it's so they can play better into tanks. So uh, when there's a, a tankier meta, meta, you have champs like this which are generally better with, with true damage abilities like this because they, they neglect all the armor that the tanks are building. But yeah, so definitely sounds like an offlaner so far. Terra's secondary ability is okay. Highland Hurl, where she pulls on the strength of her ancestors to hurl a powerful spectral axe so towards the target. The axe pierces through minions and monsters, slowing any enemies it hits. Okay, you can use it While for wave clear. powered by her, sir, Highland Hurl will also root enemies for a short okay. duration, which makes this ability perfect for initiating ganks, securing takedowns, or disengaging if the battle takes a turn for the worse. I'll pause it again. So... When you have full stacks, you're extra with root instead of slowing. That is interesting. It's probably a way for you to engage into what seems like her RMB is a dash because I've seen it in a previous uh, clip. So you probably want to root to start your engage into a dash, which looks like it did either a stun or a knock up. I didn't really pay much attention to. But the one thing I actually don't like about this ability is the VFX. I feel like the VFX could be a bit better. Also, it looks like it has no weight. I don't think it arches. It, I think it just goes straight. And then it has a, a cap. It's not like Decker stun or anything. So that's interesting. Wild Rush is Terra's alternate ability, where she braces herself before charging forwards into the fray. Any enemies caught in the stampede I really like are this. blasted back from the impact. I, I think this is the when best change they've done. Wild Rush provides Terra with a shield for a short duration too. So it's great for keeping her in the fight a little longer. You get a shield if it's unpowered. Try combining this ability with Highland Hurl and Ruthless Assault to bear down on your yeah, enemies. There it is, that makes sense. Serious damage along I, the way. Okay, so I'll pause it again just to give my thoughts on this one. I actually really, really like the dash. I feel like this is the best change they've done to our kit. I love abilities that you can charge up to change the distance on them. I love these sort of abilities. I wish they experiment more with them, but I'm glad they're starting to work on these kind of abilities because I think there's a lot of ways to add the abilities like this. I really, really like this. Terra's ultimate ability is Unstoppable Force, where she strengthens her resolve, bunkering down as an impenetrable bastion on the battlefield. When activated, Unstoppable Force grants Terra maximum Hersa stacks, cleanses all debuffs, and makes her completely immune to crowd control effects. One second. 
Wait. while also granting her extra... Okay, so when she ults, you look right here, she gains full stacks of her passive. That's interesting. So that actually gives you a lot of ways you can, like, burst someone down, unironically. Like, you can use Empowered E to catch someone, then you can RMB, ult, because now you're on them and you don't want to get CC'd by the Grux, right? And after you ult, you're going to get five stacks of your thing, so you can Q instantly and get the true damage uh, triple proc on that. So uh, there's a, actually a lot of ways to loop in your kit, depending on what you need on the situation. I actually don't think that this hero will be easy to play, but I do still think that uh, lesser skilled players will find success on this hero. But this looks like she actually requires a bit of a brain. Physical and magical armor for the duration. This ability is great in team fights or when you're oh, facing I, I, an enemy I'm loving who specializes this, uh, this in kit, crowd actually. control. Try to activate Terra's ultimate when an enemy uses one of their main crowd control abilities to immediately cleanse the debuff before rushing them wildly like the unstoppable force you are. I like it. Try building into items that increase Terra's physical power. Mute to later. I don't think you want to go to mute. The most out of her hard I think Mute kind of fell off. Are you definitely want Berserker X? Armor items depending on the matchup to keep her in the fight. Probably Berserker X, Gaia Greaves, Citadel. Actually, Citadel maybe not as much. The steadfast bulwark coming to Pistol of Razor, the Ella Frost, items like that. Very cool skin, by the way. I really like the skin. Hopefully, it's not expensive because uh, if I do like Terra, which I'm liking, I might buy this skin, ironically. But that was Terra. Let's go back to the patch notes. All right, store news. The Terra skin is a rare, so it's probably like, what, 1k? It wouldn't be bad if it's about 1k. There's a Niggy and Scorch skin. I don't really like the skin, honestly. I've seen it back in Paragon, but this Seret one, actually, I'm pretty sure the Seret one is an original. I, I, I don't know because I didn't play Paragon much, but this I think this might be an original and I actually really like this. It's also a common skin. Redhead Zerit, it's working for me. There's a bundle, probably a very expensive bundle. Uh, the avatar actually looks cool. The emo, not so much. I don't really care about the rest, honestly. But yeah, is this the old skin? It is the old skin, but it has another variant. I might buy this bundle because this is a common uh, skin. And this emote is actually pretty sick. Yeah, this this is probably the only bundle that I'm I might be interested in. All right, let's look at summer sales. Over the next couple of weeks, we're slashing prices on skins across the in-game store with up to fifty percent off some fan favorites. Sales are on a weekly rotation, so don't miss out your chance to pick up popular skins like Subsidian Rampage and Drill Guard Gideon to ensure you win your next matches. We all know that the pricing is pretty expensive for a predecessor and it's good that they're lowering them. They're obviously lowering them only for a specific amount. I just wish that the... Uh, is, is it just two weeks? On a weekly rotation. So I assume it's just two weeks and it's telling you which ones are going to be on sale in what week. If I understand correctly, there's only going to be these on sale. So if there's others that are going to be on sale and they didn't mention them here, that's a bit scummy. But I assume it's just these. All right, the balance changes. This is what I'm interested in. All right, they're increasing jungle XP. They're changing critical strike damage to 155 from 150. And they're checking up on on-hit items and trying to balance them. That's basically what I got. Also, frontline support items are getting their stats increased because frontline supports are actually kind of weak right now. So that's, that's a good change for sure. I want to read up on them. All right, they're trying to allow waves to bounce a bit more here. This is all that means. It means that minion melee minions are going to be dealing more damage. You have more melee minions. So if you take care of the melee minions, it's usually going to help you shove a bit faster. But they lowered the range ones in comparison. So the towers don't take too much damage when you shove a full wave in. And it kind of like is about the same. The only interesting thing about the objective change is that the blight from our prime went from 40% to 50%. The rest are just uh, making them more tanky. That's all it is. This is insane. Was this actually a bug? It says here that red buff used to give XP based off level 1 value. So the first time you kill red buff, the amount of XP you get from that red buff is the amount of XP you keep getting for every red buff you kill. That is very insane because that means that junglers were getting cucked on a lot of XP here. So that's interesting. That's a big, big change. They also make it less tanky. And so they, they did the same with blue buff as well. All right, they go over uh, camps here. I don't really want to read them. If you guys want to read them, you can pause them. All this means is that they made it so you get more XP from all camps. Uh, it's not a lot, but it's going to be significant. 
Uh, again, we only see numbers. It's not going to be numbers that are going to be like, that's a lot because there's a lot of camps and they cannot just buff the numbers too much because they're probably like looking at each minion and just buffing each minion just a little bit. That's all this is. Okay, Argus still suffers from the issue that he is better off in support than mid lane right now. Um, I actually have a Argus video coming out tomorrow if you guys are curious, uh, where I play mid lane. He is not even that bad, but he's obviously not great. Um, all they did here is they just nerfed the Q and they just buffed the RMB so he can trade a bit better against some of the mages, which are pretty strong right now. They are heavily nerfing this passive of Aurora. This was very much needed. She was clearing the jungle way too fast. I think this is a very, very good change. It only looks like it's at 4 plus 1 per level. I'm telling you right now, this is this is a lot because it's an AoE passive. So it, it's going to matter. Um, she's still going to be fast at clearing the jungle, but you're going to feel this. You, you're surely going to feel this. Let's see what some of the other changes are. This doesn't mean much. You're going to be building a lot of haste on, on Aurora. Uh, the reason you're going to be building a lot of haste is because her Q and her E are very long cooldowns. So just having one additional second on here barely means anything. All right, nerfing the damage or buffing the magical power scaling. So if you opt in for more AP items, you're going to get the same result of the damage you had before. But if you're going full tank, you're going to deal less damage. I think it's completely fair. I do think she's on the, a bit on the strong side. And the ultimate probably is getting a slight nerf. But again, getting more magical power scaling makes complete sense to me. If, you're, if you want to build for damage and deal more damage you can do that if you're going tank you deal a bit less damage i think that's i think that's fair i think she's she's a bit strong right now this was actually very needed for her early clear in the jungle i feel like she's pretty slow right now in the jungle so uh them buffing shadow slip is very important and the healing increase is gonna make her so she can uh sustain a bit better i think this was very much needed as well on countess uh it's not much but it, it's it's something quality of life change on crunch so he Feels a bit better when hitting enemies, this doesn't really mean much, it's just, again, quality of life. Uh, we move to Drongo, which got a slight attack speed buff. Uh, again, this means nothing because I need to see the item changes, and Drongo is one of the weaker ADCs right now, although he is still pretty decent. Uh, in team fights. he just needs to scale uh, over being a, a lane bully now. Uh, I still think he's pretty good. This, again, doesn't mean anything because we need to see the item balance changes. Okay, Feng Mao, they think he's snowballing too much in offlane. The only change I really like is this because uh, it does feel kind of cringe when you're jumping over his ultimate with like an Aurora passive or a Chimera leap and you still get executed. So this is nice. The rest, everyone's going to have a different opinion on it. I think uh, it's kind of whatever. Uh, I don't really care. He's not really my kind of character. Just weird that they nerfed what they've buffed last batch though. All right, what are they doing to Gideon? Damage decrease on Q and power scaling. Sure, it's, it's not much, but it's something. The ult is what's important. They're reducing the pull strength by 10%, and now it has a 0.5 second delay before it begins to pull enemies. That is interesting. The ult also gets a bigger cooldown. It probably should be even longer, if I'm being honest, but it's fine. That is interesting, though. I, I do want to see how this plays out. I feel like i rather have had his ult be a bit smaller, in, 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 as in like a smaller radius, but this might be interesting. This might also work. We'll see how this affects Gideon. All right, Gideon, all I need to see here is his E getting Omega nerfed. If, he, if his E is not Omega nerfed, nothing matters here, okay? All right, they're nerfing the passive damage. They're also nerfing the displacement blast damage by basically five damage at all levels. What's important though is the E. Uh, they're reducing the power scaling by 8%, the magical power scaling by 5%. Mana cost is increased straight up to 20 that's a that's a lot that is a lot straight up to 20 level one that is kind of crazy and mana restore changed from 6 to 10 to 4 to 12 okay so you kind of want to max the second now for sure i feel like they should have looked at the slow the slow is the worrying thing about this ability uh i do like that they heavily nerfed it though from 20 percent to 12 percent and from 15 to 10 the slow is very cringe though also, just a small nerf on the ult, doesn't really mean much. Alright, they just basically nerfed everything from Grux. They nerfed passive, they they nerfed the pull, they nerfed the double pin, and they nerfed the ult. Just some small numbers to put them in line with everyone. They're just taking a bit from everywhere. Uh, nothing looks 
insane insane so we'll just pass over this one howitzer tends to perform well in higher brackets of play i think this is bullshit i just, what like there's iggy there's gideon there's morgesh they're all performing better than him i mean i don't see it unless unless they're nerfing items like noxia items like megacosm this makes no sense but yeah we'll go next Iggy, massive broken ass hero. What are they doing to you? Health decrease, mana decrease, turrets, cooldown decrease. So they want him to spam more turrets, but they're reducing the magical power scaling by 3%, and also the magical armor scaling late game by 12%. That is significant, but they're also allowing him to spam more turrets. So I don't think anyone cares about the oil spill, I'll be honest. I don't think anyone looks at the oil spill and is like, yeah, that's what that does. That, that's that's the issue. That's not the issue. It's the Molotov that's the issue, and they're nerfing it by 5%. I think I'd rather see a range nerf on this one, if I'm being honest. Just give it more gravity or something, or just make it smaller. I think, I think both options are good. Uh, not a big fan of this one. Also, the ultimate is getting a damage nerf by 30 across all levels um i think that's okay doesn't really do much i wish this got looked at a bit more doesn't look that mad i think he's still gonna be very very good this is classic on meta where it just actually like it's not enough it's not enough the champion is too good right now it's not enough they, they should have took a leap of faith here on the molotov nerfed it out by like just reducing the aoe i think it, it's too forgiving everything in his kit is too forgiving there's no skill in it so Omeda, they, 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 need, they need to nerf this further. At least the Molotov. That's all I care about. This is very important for Kalari, actually, because her jungle clear is really, really bad. I'm glad they, they realized that. Uh, I do think this is going to help her quite a lot, although they're small numbers, because attack speed in the early game is very, very important. So I'm glad she's getting this. I might play some Kalari in the near future to see how this affects her. Kira's actually pretty strong right now. A lot of people sleeping on her. They need to nerf the passive. They need to nerf the Stormbreaker interactions. They need to nerf uh, her auto attack, RMB auto attack. So they just need to take some damage from everywhere, honestly. Taking some damage from the passive, very good. Dusk also getting uh, cooldown changes from 14 to 10. This doesn't do too much because you're probably maxing this. I want to see the RMB getting nerfed. Uh, looks like they are nerfing it, so that's pretty good. Nice. Okay, the, the only important thing about Quang changes is that they're making him slightly worse in the first three levels by nerfing the passive. Everything else is kind of buffed to where, like, if he builds more magical power, he's just going to deal more damage as well, or just flat out through uh, base number values. So he's going to be a bit better if you're building to uh, one-shot people or to just deal actual damage. And his first three levels are going to be less potent with his passive doing too much damage, so... That's all this really means. Small buff to Belica, of course. You want to buff the Void Bomb because that's the majority of her kit, majority of her damage. So she might have more push power in mid. She might be able to go back to her ways of where, like, she will always have pressure in mid lane with this change. But I don't see it because they're not actually changing base values. They're just changing scaling and how many times she can spam it, which should help a bit. I just don't know how much it will actually help. Small nerf to Morgish doesn't really mean much. Just more getting nerfed. Uh, they need to nerf her. Uh, I don't know if this is enough, but yeah, it's, it's it's small. It's something. I'll take it. Muriel is getting very much nerfed on every one of her single abilities. Uh, basically, nerfs all around. Very much needed. She is the best support in the game right now. Um, the only change that is important here, though, apart from the nerfs, is that the knockup height is being decreased by 10%. Apart from that, if you read all of this, she's just getting nerfed very very small nerf to phase it doesn't really do much they're just trying to nerf her down a little bit i guess uh yeah nothing to really talk about a bit of a shift on rampage i wouldn't say it's a buff or a nerf it probably is a slight buff depending that you kind of want to go damage on tanks at the start so this is much more valuable than this uh, of course this is a bit shittier before you have your first item but once you have your first item this is much better uh, apart from that nothing really important about rampage Pretty decent buff to Revenant. The issue with Revenant is his build path. I want to see if some item changes or item balance changes change this, where he has a better build path. But overall, but overall, he does get a lot more damage. So we just gotta see the items now. All right, they're buffing Richter a little bit for mainly for support role, uh, allowing him to have more mana to throw hooks, uh, giving him more value through bonus health scaling on the E, 
and just a bit more damage on his other abilities. I think it's justified. I do think he needed it. The one thing that makes or breaks Severog is actually his Q. They're actually near buffing, sorry, the mana cost from 35 to 30, and they're also giving him more damage per tier on his Q. This is very sizable. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, it's what's important for Severog. I already see him being played in top end, uh, like scrims or even like uh, ranked. Uh, in jungle, he's performing decently. He's not performing out of this world, but he's actually not that bad, which is very surprising. Something like this is could put him as a staple kind of jungler now because he, he's just able to do a lot more. Small nerf to Shimbi. I think it makes sense because nobody likes getting one shot within like four seconds by a Shimbi and still uh, building those HP items, keeping her tanky. She is actually pretty good. A lot of people don't play her, but she is pretty good. Uh, yeah, I think I think it's fine. Honestly, they're just nerfing here a little bit. Okay, the passive is getting nerfed significantly here. Uh, that's pretty big, and the ultimate is losing five percent and ten percent uh, side arrow damage. I guess uh, at level two, level three. I think this is what's important though. So kind of decent of a nerf. It's not too much, but it definitely uh, lowers her down to the other carries. It makes the gap between the carries a little smaller for sure. Small nerf for Faye on her boxing, on her E. Um, it can actually become kind of crazy if she's stacking the E's on you by two, three times. Uh, I don't think she needed this, but I guess uh, I guess it's whatever. Surprising to me, uh, Rate's actually being picked up a little bit more. I've seen him being picked up in Fang Boot the tournament and performing decently on him, which was a little surprising. I do still think that he's... A bit on the lower end, the issue with him is that he actually is scaling pretty well right now. The issue is his early game, he cannot really snowball as like how he did before. So yeah, I mean if you hit everything on this champ, he's gonna be good, right? I do think you go AD build on him though. I'm gonna be honest, I tried both builds, I think AD build is, is definitely the way. Alright, the real question is, after, after 200 patches, are they finally gonna nerf Zerus to a point where he's on the weaker side of the roster? That's what's important here. Oh, I'm, I'm so happy reading this. He definitely needed to be adjusted. Uh, the big thing here is Barricade getting damage mitigation decreased throughout all levels by 10% and the Colosseum lasting 0.5 seconds less. The rest is just nerfs all over the place. But yeah, very nice that he's finally getting checked up on a bit. Maybe he gets put down a little bit. I am sick and tired of seeing Zars, although he's very fun. I think it's time for someone else to have some fun. Alright, Judgment is being a bit gutted for Assassin builds, that's all this means. Uh, I think it's fair because I'm seeing a lot of Feng Maos and uh, even Kalaris, unironically, having a lot of value with this item, so I think this is actually a fair change. Does Devil, I feel like, needs to get slightly nerfed. They do nerf it just a little bit, uh, make it cheaper, but they remove some attack speed, very much needed. Equinox is getting slightly nerfed, Lightning Hawk is getting adjusted. Uh, getting more physical power but losing attack speed, nuclear rounds, it just has a bug fix. Small nerf to Onyxian Quiver. Plasma Blade seems to be getting more physical power, more magical power, and a bit less speed. It's still gonna be... It's probably... They want to make it a staple for the Grim build, and they're probably gonna be looking to nerf both Sky Splitter and Stormbreaker here. Sky Splitter nerfed by 0.5%. Stormbreaker nerf attack speed by 5%. This is a joke, by the way. This is an absolute joke. They needed to nerf the passive here for sure, but I guess they're just playing it safe. I, I actually hate this. Stormbreaker passive does way too much damage. It's just absolutely broken, man. They, they needed to nerf this much more, man. Much more. It's so sad. It's so sad that they're just barely touching this. Whatever, man. Attack speed nerf for Tainted Routes, getting more physical power, so again, they're, they're, they, they keep buffing physical power and nerfing attack speed, so people are more intrigued into going crit build, this is all this means. Vanquisher getting a bit more physical pen, so it's more interested for ADCs to build it, because ADCs have been striving away from it, so just getting a bit more physical pen could help. It's not much, it's literally one, but I mean, I, I'm not gonna read these, bro. They're literally nerfing or buffing physical pen by one, it's, it's not that important. Slight nerf to Inferno, not really that important. I mean, it, it is kind of decent, I'll, I'll be honest, but it's not that crazy. Mesmer is just by one again, I don't care. I feel like they're actually just taking the piss at this point. I understand why they did this for Omen, actually. It's not getting bought this much, so they're just buffing the price and giving it a bit more stats. I think that's fair. Uh, it's not Again, it's not much. It's just uh, very minimal changes. 
bones, so they're removing the tenacity and increases the physical power by 10%. That's interesting. Okay. I don't know how I feel about this, actually. That's interesting, though. That's interesting. Mutilator is getting a nerf by 0.5%. I mean, they're nerfing all the percent HP items, which makes sense. Uh, they're all pretty broken. I'm wondering, I'm wondering what they're going to do with Mega and Noxia. Combustion getting nerfed. I don't really like Combustion, but I know a lot of people are enjoying it. Uh, it probably is pretty broken. I just don't like the play style of Combustion, so uh, not much for me to say here. Uh, Dreambinder getting slight buffed. That's pretty interesting. Uh, I don't think it's a bad item at all. It's just there's barely any champs that actually need this. Noxia definitely needs a nerf here. Uh, I think this is only useful late game. Uh, early game, this passive is always going to be up. And looking at this is just five less physical power i feel like they should have just nerfed the haste by like five honestly put it at 15 instead of 20 so uh when they go combustion into noxia they don't get like 20 haste on one item and just a lot of burst damage i think this is why noxia is an issue right now or one of the one of the reasons why noxia is good is because of that Prophecy is getting nerfed. I don't care. I never build this item. Uh, Soul Bearer cooldown decrease so you can spam it a bit more. I think this makes sense because I do think this item is generally actually pr pretty dead. A lot of people like it. They think it's really good. But technically, if you look at the base stats and how, mu how many stacks you need for this to be like re a reliable item. Because the entire passive is basically just stacking it apart like getting some more increased damage. Like this item definitely needed, definitely needed this for sure. Because I think it was kind of fake. This is pretty significant. The reason it's pretty significant is because uh, there's a lot of items that give you a lot of health, uh, like Fist of Razul and uh, even Ramiant that is kind of not being built. Uh, items that like those alongside this, they that's that's sizable, man. That's sizable for World Breaker. All right, here is where they're increasing the support items for frontline tanks. Makes all sense. Just buffing health all over the place. Frosted Lure as well. Uh, Hexbound, Marshall. They're actually they're actually nerfing Marshall. Sorry, uh, it's because it's not a frontline item. Frost Guard is actually getting buffed, which is surprising. This item is very very good. Tainted Guard is actually gonna have its damage increase. This is really good not only for against ADCs but against the Grux. That is completely demolishing lobbies. Uh, so buffing this item is very important. They're also they are buffing Warden's Fate, assuming that people are going to go into crit builds now because they're removing a lot of attack speed, and they're also giving uh, ADC items more power, which means crit builds are usually better with more power and less uh, attack speed. Uh, so that's why they're buffing this item, just in case uh, crit items become really strong. And that was patch 0.19 overall. I do like some of these changes. I think some other changes were very safe and I wish they went a bit further on them, mainly the uh, Stormbreaker one I wasn't really happy about. I think there were like one or two more changes, but I kind of forgot about them. Uh, but yeah, this was patch 0.19. If you guys do like these kind of videos, I might do them more often. This is the first time I'm covering a patch. Uh, so yeah, let me know in the comment section down below. I will see you tomorrow for another predecessor gameplay video. Peace out gamers, have a good one.